Austin. Justina, it's so good to see you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Sheree. Thanks so much. So happy to be here. Really excited to be part of your business masterclass. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And I was sharing that you work at Christy Valmi, which is actually how we work because I, or met because I am working for them as well. And it just kind of hit me with, you know, the spa industry, the skincare industry. There has been more of a demand as people are kind of looking and reassessing their lives and what they want to do. So let's start with terminology. Um, is it skincare? Is it makeup artist? Is the term beauty professional, beauty industry, is that outdated or passe? I'm not exactly, I wouldn't call it um, outdated or passe. I just, I think it's evolving. I think okay. what it encompasses really is what's evolving, not even just changing. It's a lot more fluid in that terminology. So we have as a term for our industry in general, uh, in beautifying the skin uh, and it kind of encompasses um, all of the above is aesthetics. And to that end, Kristen Valmy actually just a fun fact there, um, and an important one for our industry was the pioneer of aesthetics in the United States and even is credited with coining the term aesthetics for Greek for aesthetikos and French for aestheticien because there was no name for this industry at the time um, back in the uh, early 60s. So uh, to that end, when we're talking aesthetics uh, overall and the beauty industry, I think where it's gravitating now, especially in, in our um, uh, reality, uh, between social media and marketing and branding and the way our industry has been changing in and of itself is more now towards also wellness. So it's no longer just a beauty industry. It's also the umbrella of what wellness and um, skincare and just self-care uh, in and of itself. So I think it's, it's more of just what that overall um, feeling and idea of what we're doing is really evoking. Absolutely. Wellness is, I definitely think, where it's going to be, the whole industry is going to be moving. So let me ask you, if someone's interested in becoming a professional in this industry, why is their educational choice so important? Great question, Cherie. Um, you know, education is the foundation for anything that we do. And it does nothing to do really with just a geography or a building. It could be uh, happening anywhere. I'm Greek also, and, and part of our history was during the Turkish occupation, uh, we had something called the Grifoskolio, the secret school where children would go by candlelight and moonlight to secret caves to study and learn letters and learn their history. And I think when it comes to your foundations for anything you want to do, it really is in the root of where those foundations come from and how it navigates your trajectory. Now, while there is something to be said about a formal education, um, I do think also more than just what is textbook, there has to be um, together with, with that science and that textbook learning real world applications and what I consider critical thinking and mindset in the workplace. And that's something that uh, at Christine Valmy, we actually promote very strongly within our curriculum is it's not just covering the technical hours that are the um, aesthetic requirements, but also within that curriculum, a lot to do with client care, customer service, and a lot of factors outside of um, th that sphere. And that's actually in a lot of ways more important than just the one aspect of that education, if you will, where it says, okay, what does the state board want you to know? What's textbook that you have to know about science, about anatomy, about physiology, about systems of the body? How do you take all of that and make it relevant and apply it within your professional um, workplace? And that's something where you need to, I think, cultivate those tools within that um, uh, educational atmosphere. It goes hand in hand um, with the work that we do, especially because it's so deeply rooted in people and in those connections. And that's not something necessarily you can learn from a textbook. Absolutely. And I can say, if I can just do a little plug, um, the conversation that, you know, I was brought in on, you know, kind of started with the basic of like retail, but then we were able to go into five star customer service. I've done a training on diversity. Um, I'm doing a training again next week on bullying in the workplace. Also relevant that a lot of other schools are not incorporating in. So I totally, um, I totally honor Christy Velmi for just having that foresight to have that conversation and fully prepare graduates they're well-rounded and really fully able to step into the industry. 
So you kind of, if I may piggyback on that for a second, especially when it comes to now that we're in a pandemic and you say, well, how do I, um, you asked, you know, how important is that education? Well, especially now more than ever. And that's why I said, you know, education learning is not about geography. It can happen anywhere. And that's the beauty, I think, for where we are now in 2020 with the technology available to us, the information and the access to that information is so powerful that we're really trying to maximize uh, the tools available to us and bringing that into our education through these types of lectures, these platforms, and our online hybrid program that we've um, been so fortunate to be able to be, uh, implement together with the state of New York to allow the opportunity for students to continue to learn, to meet their career goals, not miss a beat through this pandemic and really be prepared so that they can come back in person um, slowly, safely, to apply those skills and just be ready to hit the workforce, uh, hit the ground running and take all of that experience and conversations that aren't necessarily happening within formal curriculums. And they're still just so integral to that professional mindset and that preparation that I think uh, the most they can take advantage and, and like we do at Chris and Valmy, the better off they will be for that, um, for their new careers. Absolutely. I totally agree. So you were talking about the systems and I just think about when I was in massage school, I was surprised by the depth of information that was covered. I felt like I was back in my biology program with skin and muscles and bones. What is one thing that's taught in skincare that might surprise our audience or those who are interested in attending school? Uh, fantastic question. Um, this is something that, you know, we talk about in the classroom also, because one thing that we, we tend to see, especially with the younger generation of students, is this need to actually unlearn a lot of what they've become conditioned to due to social media, what they've been seeing on YouTube, and what the ideas around the beauty industry, makeup, and skincare uh, are all about. And um, I think one thing that's quite surprising is that they realize wait a second, there's a lot more that goes into this than applying a mask and understanding, you know, that uh, you can just, you know, apply some serums and hydration creams and what it really means when we are bringing all this information to our clients, that there is a heavy amount of um, theory and studying involved. Now they're prepared for this. Every student that comes to us, uh, either to enroll or for more information about the school, they are taken through the school or through the curriculum to understand that they are, um, we do spend a heavy amount of hours in theory to understand anatomy, systems of the body, machines and electricity, uh, chemistry, basics of chemistry, nutrition, ingredients, and a lot of subjects where you'd say, well, that's quite intensive. How do we bring that in together? And then in the practical theory curriculum, they learn then basics, uh, theory of hair removal, machines and electricity, and um, uh, histology of the skin, and just taking all those elements further in the practical approach. And what's uh, most surprising there is when they start to connect the dots, I think they realize a little bit more that this is actually far more intensive that they were necessarily prepared for. Because again, there's just kind of one notion in mind of like what it means to beautify the skin and provide you know services for people to feel good, but how much information and knowledge is required to actually get to that point so that we can do good for the client, take care of the client the right way and still um, take care of their skin and, and do the job that uh, our license you know, essentially requires and maintaining that integrity. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> Ooh, okay, so times are changing. What are the trends that you are seeing or even predicting that will be um, kind of taking over the industry in the coming months? Times are changing. Bob Dylan, you know, said this a long time ago. And, you know, it's amazing how relevant certain things, and I think I just dated myself, but uh, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how relevant, um, you know, and, and how cyclical uh, the world generally is, society could be here. And I think one of the things that um, we are going to be seeing, we've been seeing it already, and something that's really come to the forefront um, through this pandemic is flexibility, fluidity, and um, finding new ways to stay relevant for our clients and our customers. So uh, to that end, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of online um, virtual communication uh, because it does present an opportunity for 
um, professionals to reach their clientele and reach a whole new demographic even, uh, independent of where anybody is, not just within their region, but globally, which I think is huge because it prevents, uh, it actually um, allows for, pardon, uh, allows for a number, uh, infinite number of opportunities to uh, generate revenue, to increase visibility, and to really just reach whole new markets. And um, I think that's definitely something that it's not going to go anywhere for a very long time, um, being able to still connect with clients either through virtual consultations or um, uh, being able to bring this information to clients in the comfort of their own home or uh, wherever they are, um, especially since now we have cell phones too and smartphones. So you're no longer tied either to a desktop or a laptop. Um, either. So I think that's just fantastic. Uh, the other thing I think we're going to be seeing is a lot more innovation with technologies and ways to bring the spa experience to the clients at home safely, of course, because you never want to take the place of the work that we do. I think we're in an industry that um, in and of itself just has a number of opportunities uh, and it won't go anywhere. People will always be seeking these types of services, the ability to um, beautify the skin, to feel good about themselves from the inside out, to escape for a moment and to really care for themselves. But I think the important thing will be that we're gonna be finding ways to bring that experience, the spot experience, because that's what brings a lot of people um, to the work that we do is the customer experience. And we're gonna be having new tools to be able to have clients do that for themselves um, within safe parameters. Because of course, there's a reason why we spend so much time in school and uh, in vigorous training and licensing programs to be able to do this work, especially with New York State guidelines, which are no joke. And it's not something that we take lightly at all. And in Kristen Valmy, we have a very rigorous program um, for training that encompasses um, all of that with uh, particular regard to sanitation infection control procedures. So the last thing I really think that we're also gonna be seeing more of is uh, more attention to the customer experience, especially with regard to sanitation and infection control procedures. Now, sanitation infection control in our industry has actually been extremely strict. So for us, it's already been so ingrained professionally from the very beginning um, as, as an industry. Whereas now I think it's really just gonna be about uh, comforting the client to feeling safer and more secure within your hands, within your um, service. And that's what it's really, I think, going to um, evolve a little bit more around uh, just that particular attention to assure still promoting a healthy um, environment, a calming environment, a wellness promoting environment, um, while at the same time making them feel just really um, secure through that experience. Absolutely. I think technology is going to be the key. Um, we're going to probably see a, a split where people are going to want more technology or they're going to want less technology and more hands-on. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the industry in the coming weeks and, and months. So well, for sure, Sheree, though, on to that end, I mean, we're in an industry where as estheticians, our tools are our hands. There is uh, nothing that can actually replace that human experience, the human touch. And I, I think that especially with quarantining and social distancing and really um, minding the way we interact with one another. It's such an important part though in the work that we do because you're coming in a very intimate con contact with your clients. You're working with the face, you're working with the mouth, you're working around the eyes, you're working you know, with the lymphatic system. You're working with so much that goes into the work that we do. Um, where again, if you wanna talk about what's surprising in our industry is, you know, and in and, and that education is, well, what does this have to do with my face? Why so much learning here? Why so many personal questions in an intake form? What does, you know, what do my implants or my, you know, metal pins have to do with my face? And, you know, I think from the client's perspective, right? But as professionals, all these elements are so important because important. our goal is to not just protect our license and, and of course do what's within that professional integrity, but by the same token, take care of our clients and provide um, still a, uh, healthy and just positive experience. Hard to do when you were looking like mad scientists, you know, doing um, <laughs> doing a service. But, you know, that's where I think we'll need to just kind of supplement in other ways to really allow for that still human experience to come through. And that's part of the, I think, one of the um, uh, positive uh, angles and, and, and just privileges that we have as estheticians and as beauty professionals in this industry. 
Absolutely. And I mean, I remember that from my massage days and the list and what do you have and having those conversations because you want to make sure that you're, I mean, kind of like the medical profession, our intention is to do no harm. So, if, you know, and I do find that when they come into the room and we've talked about this in class, like they really do kind of take their mask off. So, you know, once they get comfortable, they share, they probably overshare. Um, and I think there is going to be a real craving for that connection because we've been so um, isolated. And, and I think I shared this with you before, but there was a great uh, conversation that someone had with me and it was like physical distancing, but social connecting. Um, so, you know, that Zoom and different things like that. But once it's all over, people are going to flock um, back into the industry to have that touch, to have those interactions, um, to yeah. just feel the way that they did before and look even better. So with that, <laughs> I always like to wrap up the interview with a question of what piece, one, one piece of advice that you would give our audience who are interested in becoming um, skincare and beauty aesthetic nail professionals. What is one piece of advice that you could give? Hard to target just one piece of advice, there, <laughs> um, certainly. But again, I think um, especially with the current climate, if there's one thing I could share with burgeoning professionals or um, people who are looking to maybe change career, this is as good a time as any, um, I would say go for it. Uh, the one thing I would share for sure is stay flexible, stay open, because we are in an industry that presents so many opportunities to apply our learnings and apply our education where you never know if you have one thing in mind, you never know where the next road is going to take you, what opportunity will present itself, where you thought you would really enjoy one aspect of the industry, you gravitate towards something else or realize you have an innate ability um, to do this, or maybe you do have a way with people, or if you're looking for a way to just connect with people and just help along these lines where you're working with um, work that allows you to play such a part in the way people feel uh, I think then this is an avenue that I would absolutely advocate that you pursue. And if you're really gung hoing, you know, to, to make this happen, I would uh, suggest to also stay solutions oriented. It's uh, been a very challenging time for a lot of businesses to be able to stay proactive, to stay relevant, to overcome this hurdle with challenges and financial hardships and ways to stay at the forefront of their clients' minds and opportunities. And I think being part of the solution, finding ways that you can add value for your business or for uh, your employer and ways that you can bring in other elements and that fluidity, I think, will be um, super important, paramount, really, to uh, success in this industry as it continues to change and evolve. And it's something that I've um, also incorporated with um, my learnings with uh, graduate students. I'm a head esthetician also, as you know, with uh, Aptos Skincare and The Ritualist based in New York. And um, in working with students who had graduated from Christine Valmy, it was the one thing that I uh, absolutely promoted in working with different brands, brand partnerships, and creating, curating various uh, experiences, client experiences, treatment protocols, and so forth, is working with the students in that mindset of uh, how do you stay fluid? How do you come up with creative ways to incorporate your learnings for different um, energies within our work, different companies and, and brand messages and platforms and staying open to those possibilities? And I think that's the beauty and really at the core of this work that we're doing here, Cherie, is through all of this, it's not going anywhere. We have so many opportunities available to us that the world really is your oyster for anybody looking to pursue a new career and a new avenue. The time is now. Um, go for it. And I assure you that we will all be in really good hands. It was so well said, Despina. So I want to make sure that if people want to get in contact with you, you are available on social media. Um, and this is the best way to reach you. Um, and you are Christy Valmi, so you people can reach you there as well. Um, if people are interested in reaching out to me, I am the Spa SOS on Instagram and Facebook. And I always, as always, I want to say thank you so much to Well World TV for giving us the platform to have this conversation. It was so great to have you today. Thank you so much and take care. Amazing. Thank you, Cherie. Thank you, Well World. Also, I'm super excited and uh, looking forward to just talking more. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Alrighty. Take care. Bye-bye.